Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2023 Integra Odyssey motorhome and we're gonna be taking a look at, and I'm gonna show you how to install the Go Power Solar Kit. This kit's gonna have two solar panels and an inverter charger. Like I said, the system's gonna come with two solar panels. They're rated for 200 watts a piece. We've already got those mounted up on our roof. We actually tied this into a solar panel that was already pre-existing from GoPower on this RV. The one issue that we had is that is a little bit older solar panel, so it's only 190 watts. And when you're dealing with solar, when you connect them all together, you're gonna to deal with the lowest component. So um, all three of our solar panels essentially will only give us um, 190 watts a piece. So we're only losing out on 20 watts total. Um, so it's really not a huge deal. It's still gonna give us tons and tons of solar power. One big thing when we're talking about solar is that you, your solar kit is only as important as the amount of storage in your battery that you have. We did have two lead acid 100 amp hour batteries in this camper under the step, um, the entryway step, and we switch it out for one 300 amp hour lithium battery. Now a question we get a lot of times is how much solar do I need in order to run a certain appliance or how many days can I go out uh, on a certain amount of solar? Well, the real answer is solar cannot run anything by itself. Solar simply recharges your battery and then you use the battery power. So it's how much you're charging your battery versus how much you're using the battery. Think of it as a fuel tank on a car. Um, you can't use the fuel straight from the fuel pump. You have to use it from your gas tank. So the bigger your gas tank, the longer you can go in your car. Same thing with your battery. The larger your battery bank, the longer you're gonna be able to go, but you need to get a solar setup that is able to refuel your battery about as quickly as you're using it or as close to that as you can. Mounted up on our ceiling of our storage compartment, you can see our inverter charger. Uh, this is what's going to give us the capability to use that power when we're not plugged into shore power. This is gonna give you the ability to use those household appliances inside your RV with that inverter power. Um, and it's going to help to charge your battery much more efficiently when hooked up to shore power than your RV would before. This kit's gonna come with two panels. The top one is going to be your solar controller. This is how you're gonna see what is actually coming in from the sun. So you can see we're getting 13.1 volts from the sun. We'll have a battery monitor that'll tell us the temperature, which you can see was 83 degrees. Um, it's pretty warm out here right now. My watch is telling me it is 78 degrees and we just had this side of the camper parked on the sun. So um, that'll help you to be able to monitor the um, the input to your battery because your battery can get warm uh, from the solar charging it and it'll help to monitor that and it'll change the cycles of how much they're how much energy is flowing into the battery based off the temperature. Down here at the bottom you're going to have your inverter control and your charger con control. So um, if you want your charger turned on you can turn it on. If you want your inverter turned on you can turn that all on from this panel and you don't have to do it from the the inverter. As far as the installation goes, this install, it might seem daunting with the amount of um, components that you have. Putting the solar panels on the roof, I will be completely honest, that is the easiest part of this entire install. As long as you're not afraid of heights and you can get up on your roof, uh, make sure you screw them down nice and secure. Uh, that's gonna be the easiest part of this install. My personal opinion, the hardest part of this install is doing all the wiring. You can see here that I've got everything nice and neat tucked up out of the way. Um, I use a lot of uh, wire loom clamps in order to do that. And um, it, it just really helps to make the install a lot cleaner when you've got everything organized. If you ever have a problem down in the future, um, that's, that's where you're gonna go to is to check out your wiring. We did have quite a few wires that are extra, which are all these. That was, that was a whole different issue for us because we had to move the battery from the footwell of our entryway door back here to the back. So we had to move everything that was hooked to it in that bay back here. If you have the same issue, um, you just need to, typically you just need to match the wire that your components are connected to up there, run those extension wires back here and get them all hooked up. But really, I, I truly think that all of this is not too difficult to do. The inverter charger is pretty easy to get installed. The solar panels are super easy to get installed. Both of those just screw in place. You just have to be careful and take your time with the wiring. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the install. To begin our installation, we are looking at our batteries in the footwell of our steps here. Um, going up into the coach, this is very common for a place for them to be. 
Um, what we're doing with our setup is we are eliminating these two batteries because they are lead acid and we have a 300 amp hour lithium battery in the back of the coach that we're gonna be using as our main battery for the whole coach for all the accessories and stuff. So um, what we need to do, and you may have to do too, um, is we're having an issue fitting that big battery in this box. So what we're gonna have to do is we need to disconnect the positive wires and the negative wires, and we're gonna extend them from here back to that back area of our coach where we're putting our new battery. Now you don't necessarily have to do it the way that we're doing with running the wires back to our battery. The one thing you will have to do is your inverter will have to be within at least 10 feet of those batteries. So we've done some installs before where we put, swap the two house batteries out for two lithium batteries. The thing is, is you're gonna want a dinette or something like that so that you can put the inverter in place within about 10 feet. You can see we've got ours mounted up here upside down and we are more than close enough to our battery so that these cables will reach. You cannot extend these cables um, because of the uh, length and the amount of energy that this will put through these. So um, you just wanna be cautious with that in mind. So if you decide to do something up there, you just want to be sure that you are close enough to where you can hook the inverter directly to the battery with the provided cables. Now we've got our cables run back that we needed to transfer back here to get them connected to our new battery. Uh, we just ended up drilling a one and a half inch hole in the bottom of our RV so that we could run those up inside. Um, our RV was already prepped with solar wires, so we just took the extension wires that come with our solar kit and extended those from the cubby right next to the door back with this, these two wires, and we've got it up inside ready to hook to our controller. Now we're gonna go up onto the roof and get our solar panels in place and screwed down to the roof. Now we've got our solar panels laid out on the roof. Um, you'll wanna connect up to your solar panels um, to either a, um, a junction that goes down through the roof or you can pick one up off our website. You simply just, uh, you'll have to drill a small hole in your roof. You're going to put that junction on top and then you're gonna run it down through your roof to wherever you're gonna connect it to your solar controller. Uh, but once you get all your solar panels put in place, we're gonna take some butyl tape we're gonna stick it to the bottom of these feet. Once you have your butyl tape in place under each foot, we'll come back with our screws and screw our panels down the roof. And we're gonna take some self-leveling sealant. You wanna go around the tops of the screws and around the whole outer edge. To show you an example of the connections that we're gonna to have to make with our solar panels, um, it's much easier to show you down here on the ground than it is up on top of the RV. You're gonna get two of these connectors in your kit and they are the expansion connectors so that you can connect both of your um, solar panels up. You're gonna have a female on your extension. You'll also get these two extensions here. We'll just pop those together. It's literally like puzzle pieces. You cannot hardly screw this up. So you connect these two up and you'll notice that we have two female ends and two male ends. Then we'll just take each of the female ends from this and connect it to the two male ends from our solar panel kit and the two male ends will get connected to the female ends on the solar kit. And then these two wires will either get connected to your extension wires to come down through um, an opening that you've cut through the roof to run down or to that block that I was talking about, and then your wires will run down from that. But it's really, really simple. Connect your solar panels to the ends of your plugs here, and then run these to your extension wires. Now that we've got our solar panels secured onto our roof, we can start working on the wiring for our inverter and converter out here. Uh, we've got ours mounted up here on the ceiling of this compartment. We've got a solid sheet of plywood above here, so we just used some wood screws, ran it up in there. The best way to do this is to mark out the larger section of this hole. If you can hold it up or use a template to mark where those holes are, then get your screw started. Then you can have a friend help you lift this up. You'll slide it over those screws and then slide it one direction or, the, or another in order to lock it in place. Then we can come back and screw those down tight. 
Uh, you can really mount this wherever you want in any orientation that you want. You just want to be sure that you are eight inches away from everything. So we're eight inches against away from the door here, eight inches away from this wall. And then you also want to have space here. So if they decide to go stack stuff in here later on, which is definitely going to happen because it's a storage bay, um, they're going to want to keep their stuff at least, at least eight inches away from the top of our unit here, which is now the bottom, and then also our side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this 30 amp cord, which you want to pick one of these up. Uh, depending on how far you need to go inside, we're going to have to use uh, two wires potentially to go from the outside here inside to our converter box. So um, we're going to end up cutting this up. So you really don't even need the end on here. Uh, we just need the wires for the inside. Starting from our unit, we've got our cable that we cut in half. You'll see that we have the AC input and the inverter AC output. So your output, you're going to want that to go to your uh, panel inside. And then this, you're going to want to go to um, your transfer switch on the inside. So our transfer switch, it's kind of confusing because we got the box upside down right now, but you're gonna have your locations one through six, start at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. We put the hot wire, which is our black, into number one. And then your neutral for the first AC input is gonna go into number three. And that just takes a flathead screwdriver on the inside, loosen it up, throw your wire in there, and then tighten it back down. And then on the side over here, you'll see that we have our grounds. And then go up to the inverter output. You're gonna go into hot into number four, and then we're gonna go into number six with our neutral. And then again, up to our ground up here. Um, the other ones that we skip, that is if you have a 50 amp, that is for the other leg, for the other hot, for the other hot leg, essentially. So because we only have a 30 amp camper, uh, we don't have to worry about that. Inside of our RV, uh, we were able to come through this back door, or the, the back panel back by our, um, our bed, and this goes straight down into that compartment. Makes it really nice because all of our uh, components are right here. A lot of the times you'll have to run it up to a different section, but luckily ours is right here under the bed. So this is our plug coming from our transfer switch. That is the in that we were talking about. The, that's, those are the bottom wires. And you can see we have our, um, we just, you just want to match whatever you take off here. So uh, we're going to end up pulling some wires off here. You have the hot wire on the left, the neutral wire on the right, and then we have our ground going to the bus bar, just like on our other part of our transfer switch. And then for our inverter output, we want that to go into the back of our panel here. So we've got our other wire run through. And then we did the same thing. Whatever wires you disconnect on the front side, you want to match up those wires with the hot, the neutral, and the ground. If you have a 30 amp camper like us, uh, you'll have your main breaker. That's the one you're gonna wanna tie into. Um, you can see, typically they're gonna have a lock on here so that you can't remove this because that's where the main power is running through. Um, it's always going to be your largest breaker too. So um, if you have a 50 amp, you're probably gonna have two legs. So um, typically those will say main and main on the middle and then they branch off either side. But for our 30 amp, this is the one that we had to tie into. So we just remove this screw, pop this breaker out. Obviously make sure that you don't have your camper plugged in or your um, batteries connected. And then we disconnected our white wire from here, our ground wire from inside here, and then reconnected our black wire there. Now back outside our RV, we're going to go to our go over the DC side of things. The AC is going to be your power that you get uh, on the inside. Your DC is going to be these two big wires that come in your kit. We're going to have the black wire, which is our ground. You just need to run that over into the battery, uh, the negative post of the battery. And then our positive wire is going to go the same thing. We're going to run it across. I just used the loom clamps that come in our kit. I actually use a few extra, so you might want to pick up some more. Um, but I use those, ran them nice and tight up against the ceiling. And then here you can see you want to run it into your fuse. And you'll need a, a pretty large Allen key there in order to clamp it down and then coming out of our fuse to our battery. And for this particular kit, um, you may notice there's a ton of extra wires here. That's because of those wires we had to run back from, our, from under our steps. But you will have a fuse holder in here. You'll want to run your solar panel out uh, that's going from out of your um, 
out of your control box here on the wall and you'll have that, put that fuse holder on there and then connect it to the positive terminal. You're gonna have the black wire from that same selection. Um, so essentially on the back side of this panel, you're gonna have a solar positive and negative and a battery positive and negative. These are the battery positive and negatives and then the solar positive and negatives, you'll wanna run the solar panel wires that we ran back here into those. The last two wires you'll need to run is going to be a remote wire from the back side of our panel here. And then you're gonna have a temperature sensor that you'll need to put on the negative post of the battery. Uh, we've got that run here. They're both gonna look like a telephone line, uh, just like this wire here. We just ran those up, ran it inside some wire loom, and then ran them over and plugged them into the uh, corresponding connectors here. The remote is gonna be for that one we were talking about, and then the battery temperature um, connector will go right here. In order to ground our battery and our whole inverter system, you will want to um, ground the battery. I used a, a two gauge wire just to make sure that it was a nice solid ground. Ran this to the battery down and out and, and screwed it to the frame. And we also ran another jumper ground wire from that negative post of the battery to the negative post on the outside of our inverter. Uh, this is going to be your earth ground, and this is just going to make sure that your whole system is protected um, in case something were to happen. Well, guys, hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the GoPower Solar Kit is right for you and your camper.